Hey guys, I'm Bada Colon, and today I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop to restore vintage photos. Today's episode is sponsored by DCO Branding. DCO is dedicated to designing, creating, and orchestrating a unique branding experience for their clients. You can learn more at www.thedcobrand.com and don't forget to follow them on social media at the DCO brand. Most recently, my family asked me to restore this old photograph of my grandparents. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen so you can see. This photo was probably taken if I had to estimate sometimes in the 50s or the 40s. My grandparents are displayed here. And as you can see, the photo has some damage with time. It's gotten cracked, it's gotten some spots. And so I'm gonna show you how to restore these photos in Photoshop and get a final product similar to what you see right here. I'm gonna throw that up on the screen as well. So let's get right into it. To get started, you're gonna to wanna to open up Photoshop. And the first thing I wanna demonstrate is the actual damage to the photo. So as you can see, there's a large crack in the middle. There's some spotting throughout the photo, some tears in the corner. We're gonna simply change some of these features by using my ultimate favorite feature on Photoshop, which is the Fill Content Aware tool. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna select the section you're gonna start with. I like to start with the big chunks first. And so I'm gonna hit Fill and make sure it's on Content Aware and press OK. And see what just happened? The computer did the work for me. Photoshop has some type of algorithm, some type of formula to kind of guesstimate where it can fill in the blanks and kind of correct those spots. So whatever you select, it's basically gonna cover up. So I'm just gonna speed through and see I've done nothing different. I've literally just used the Fill Content Aware tool for the top half of the photo. So now we're gonna transition to the bottom half where this tear is from where I scanned. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use the Fill Content Aware tool and just correct some of the inconsistencies because of course this is not a absolute perfect method, but at the same time, it's gonna give you a way to start and then you can clean up afterwards. So we'll get to the corners in a second. I'm gonna start working on my grandmother's face. And as you can see, I try to get the most obvious blemishes out of the way first and then I work my way into the details. As I speed through, you notice that I'm literally cleaning up the spots around the photo and you can notice a big difference here. We're taking a look at our progress so far and as I clean up the spotting throughout the photo, you can see how it's becoming crisper. You get a clear image of what's going on in the photo. Now I have it on super speed here, but this does take quite a while. So I don't want you to think that this is a quick fix. This is time consuming. It can be a little bit tedious. So you have to be patient and work with it little by little. So now we're gonna take our time here and tackle this big crack in the middle. I don't want to necessarily fill and content aware the entire crack because again, it's going to be a little bit inconsistent in how it reads it. So I'd rather take my time and just do it step by step. I started from the bottom and I'm making my way to the top. It's not absolutely perfect, but again, this gives you just a head start. And then we're gonna go back in, especially towards that chin area and correct the inconsistencies to make sure that it's correct. As you can see, some areas are easier to fix than others. I skipped over the eye area because I'm gonna come back to it to get a more detailed fix to it. In the meantime, I went ahead and finished the rest of the easier parts of the crack. And now I'm working on the eyebrow area. First, I use the Fill Content Aware tool to just go ahead and give me a cleaner surface to work with. And then I'm actually gonna take the Clone Stamp tool to go ahead and copy from the part of the eyebrow that is visible and paste it into the area that isn't as visible to create the rest of my grandfather's eyebrow.
now I'm using content aware technology again, just to go ahead and continue cleaning up this area. Again, I'm gonna have to work with this pupil area a little more closely later, but in the meantime, let's finish cleaning up the rest of the photo. Already, as I'm scrolling out, I can see the progress on the photo. Sometimes when you're really scrolled in and zooming in on the picture to get things fixed, you can think, oh man, I'm not making any progress. But once you zoom out, it's like, man, yeah, I am making progress. Now here we're working on the chin area. The content aware tool pretty much merged my grandparents' faces together and we know that's not realistic. So we're just gonna go back in and try to manually fix it. So right now, as you can see, I'm kind of selecting the area that's kind of exaggerated on my grandfather's face. I'm gonna use the paint tool to kind of paint over that and create a shadow almost. And so I've selected a darker color and with the paint tool, I'm just going in and going over it. And now I'm gonna use the gradient tool to kind of fade in that shadow a little bit. So now I'm gonna move over to this corner and I'm gonna fix some of the inconsistencies from the content aware tool. It kind of created a new pattern on her shirt. So I'm just gonna go in and clean it up a little bit just to make it look a little more realistic. So we're looking good so far. And as you can see from where we started to where we are now, we've made great progress. I'm gonna keep cleaning up a little bit of her hair and now we're gonna tackle this eye area. So I'm gonna zoom in towards the pupil area and I'm just gonna kind of imagine where the pupil is. I zoom out a little bit just to kind of look, make sure that it's consistent. And now I'm cleaning up around it. So as you can see, we're kind of building off of the other eye. I'm copying a little bit of elements and a little bit of the colors just to kind of match and make it look a little more like it would be. And so now I'm creating that eyelid area that kind of goes over his eyes he kind of has a hooded eye and I'm recreating some of the light on his eyes and his pupils and some of the brightness underneath again looking at the other eye and kind of matching those elements fixing the eye you can see we're pretty much almost done with the photo I'm gonna clean up some more of this chin area and next I'm just gonna go ahead and correct the lighting maybe adding a little bit of a tint to avoid the photo being so yellow. I'm gonna kind of adjust it a little bit, lean it more towards the blues. And this is the final product. I'm very satisfied with this photo. I was excited to work on this project. And as you can see, it's a great result. Well, I hope that helps someone out today. As always, if you know a better way of doing it, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm sure we can learn from each other. And also, if you want to learn more about graphic design, photography, videography, or any tech stuff, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.